Welcome to Coal Quality and Combustion class. My name is Rod Hat, and hopefully I'll help you understand coal a little bit better. Today, we're going to talk about the proximate analysis, and particularly moisture. The moisture reported in the proximate analysis as received is the total moisture in coal. And it's important because it's a dilutant. Now there's two basic forms of moisture, the inside and the outside. The outside moisture approximates the surface moisture. It's measured using the air dry loss. As received, of course, means the moisture in the bag that the coal sample came in. That's how the lab got it. Hopefully it's representative. Remember, someone takes a coal sample and is responsible for preparation before it goes into the lab. Most samples are taken using a mechanical sampler. But there's many different styles and forms. They all try to limit the loss of surface moisture. But they also usually contain a crusher. And crushers generate heat and wind flow, which can impact that surface moisture. Here's manual crushing. After the crushing and splitting has made the as-received sample bag, the first test typically is the air dry loss moisture test, where the coal is dried in either ambient air or air heated in an oven 10 to 15 degrees above ambient temperatures. For low rank coals, typically a maximum of 10 degrees above ambient or an overall maximum of 40 degrees C apply. Now, reporting coal on the air dry loss or ADL basis does not include this surface moisture, so it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're using the actual weight of coal to look at this basis of analysis. Bituminous and anthracite type coals typically reach a constant weight relatively quickly, showing a sharp division between surface and bed moisture. Lignites and subbituminous coals tend to keep losing weight or maybe are more sponge-like in nature. Here's the sort of oily nature of bituminous coal and why we can reach a constant weight when we do the air dry loss test. And here's an example of dried lignite that I'm adding water to that shows you it's very hard to define a surface moisture versus an inside moisture for these low rank coals. This is sort of that sponge-like behavior. Or what it means is the coal will keep losing weight in the air dry loss moisture test over time. This chart represents that effect where the blue line is the bituminous coal loses the surface moisture and stays at a constant weight, but the low rank coals can continue losing weight. Now all coals can be high in surface moisture, particularly in wet or rainy climates. High surface moisture coals tend to be hard to handle. On the other hand, Low surface moisture coals, particularly coals that get below the bed or equilibrium type moistures, can make them dusty and, again, hard to handle. The Dutch organization Kima showed research that when coal gets below the ASDM equilibrium moisture, it tends to be dusty. And that's, that's, what, that's what this chart represents, is over time, Coal dries out and gets dusty. Now, this equilibrium or bed type moisture 
sometimes called the residual moisture in the actual ASTM test, is that moisture that the coal has even when it's underground. So before it's mined and broken up into a bunch of chunks and exposed to the environment, that's what we're trying to get at is that moisture. And of course, one lignite mine told me that that's, you can tell where the lignite is because that's where the wet spot is in the ground. The rock doesn't hold much moisture. Now equilibrium moisture is a test where we look at the moisture a coal will hold at a constant humidity, temperature, and pressure. And this approximates that bed moisture. The amount of moisture that remains after the air dry loss is the residual moisture. It also is in that approximate range of the bed moisture. And we find that by heating the laboratory pulverized dust sample to over the boiler point of water, like typically 110 degrees C. Now here's just some pictures and typical moisture characteristics looking at that bed or inside moisture versus the propensity or the, the, the ability or the desire for a coal to have high surface moisture. High fine sizes or a lot of fines always increases the surface of the material so therefore the surface moisture has more of an impact particularly with handling. So as we progress through the ranks there's lower and lower bed moistures. Subbituminous coal, unfortunately, when it dries, seems to crack up and create more fines, which again leads to problems with more surface moisture. Bituminous coals tend to be more resilient, and they get almost an oily nature to them, where they really shed water rather than try to absorb it. So when we actually start looking at our proximate analysis, we see the as received column includes the total moisture, both the bed and surface combined, if the sampling was representative of the total amount of coal you're under study. The ADL is an intermediate drying that represents how much was lost in that drying process in ambient or slightly above ambient heating in an oven. It's not really used on a commercial basis because it doesn't have the quality associated with the surface moisture dilution. Dry basis is used to look at coal quality without the dilution factor of the moisture. And the MAF looks at the properties of the black stuff that burns, in particularly the heating value. And that's way you can sort of look at what type of coal it is, with the idea being that the lower right coals have lower MAF values and the higher rank coals have high values. Hope this was helpful for you and you now understand a little bit more about the moisture in coal. Thanks so much and I look forward to producing more videos like this. Please leave your comments. This is my first try. I look forward from hearing what you have to say. Thanks. Bye-bye.